Hey guys, it's Mark from Ericsson Machine and Performance. Today I'm just going to show you kind of how to mold some of your own fiberglass parts. So, well, how to lay up parts. We'll do a molding video later. So these are all, you know, my molded 24-7 footholds. So these are the Superjet Universal. I'll okay, basically show you what I do, how I prep the molds to lay apart. We're going to lay this part. It's just going to be laid up with chop strand mat and vinyl ester resin. And then I'll show you when we separate it. So let's get started. Alright guys, so there's a couple different ways to lay up parts. So this is tooling gel coat. So it's basically the negative of a part. So what we do is we design the part, we pull a mold off of that, which is then called the plug. We then take the plug, we spray tooling gel coat in it, we lay fiberglass over it, we separate it, and then that's the mold, which is these. So these, which they're a high production part, we make a whole bunch of them. You can wax the mold, which is multiple coats of wax, or you can use Partol PVA. So this is basically like a thin plastic film. So that's what I end up using on these. The only real minus to PVA is like if there's any little bubbles or stuff like that, you'll actually see it in the final finished part. For a foothold, it really doesn't matter because you're sanding them, laying fiberglass over them um, and turf. So who really cares? But like on a hood or a hull, you know, a pretty part, you really don't want that, which is why that type of stuff will do multiple coats of wax. So I'll end up doing another video in the future, which shows you, you know, us probably laying up a hood and then maybe the waxing process. So, but this type of stuff really isn't all that hard to do as long as you take the right steps. Um, and there's a whole bunch of companies on the internet, you know, fiberglass.com, um, Composites Evolution, Composites One, um, and US Composites, who I get most of, you know, the small batch fiberglass supply stuff that we do. All the big stuff we get from Composite One. So as you see, I basically just lay, you know, paint it very thin coat, make sure you don't miss any spots. And then this is going to dry. When it dries, it's going to leave basically like a thin peel off film, which then when we lay the resin on it, when we separate it, which is the last step, it'll just separate from the mold nicely. So, but when you do this, make sure you don't miss any spots or you're going to pull off tooling gel coat and wreck your mold. So the other thing you want to make sure is when you do this, you want to make a nice even coat. And if you notice, I lay these on an angle. So that way I don't end up with pockets. Like on these footholds, there'll be a pocket of PVA that sits there, which will make it one, never dry and two, look like crap. Now, I'll, I end up coating them all. By the time I get to the last one, I'll then go back and check and make sure I didn't miss any spots because it kind of all wets itself out. And when I know they're good, then I just walk away, you know, depending on how hot it is. You know, this stuff could dry in 10 minutes or it could take, you know, half an hour. Don't rush, you know, make sure it's completely dry. Because one of the worst feelings, which unfortunately, if you do enough fiberglass work, is when you go to separate a mold and it doesn't separate. And then you have a very big, expensive, non-productive block of fiberglass to learn your lesson on. 
So and people write the last very long time. Um, these rules. What's that handle? Um, that whole thousand souls. Um, yeah, this is the original actually from the basically. Everybody's talking about the last uh, 15 years, but that's also you know, not the handle, um, it's original souls, I mean. So if you can kind of friendly and you buy something quick, right? Hold it on the last really time. All right, now let's let it dry and we'll be back shortly. All righty then. drone video all right guys so here we go first of all whenever you're doing this you should be wearing a respirator for this video I'm not going to so you can hear what I'm saying but keep that in mind so I'm using vinyl ester resin so honestly for footholds polyester is fine but you know with hoods and stuff like that I just stock one resin now. Um, so use a Bodhi bottle, which is a nice, you know, squeeze way to put the MEKP, the hardener in. Just mix it well. You know, make sure you've mixed thoroughly. You go to the edges, the bottom, everything, so you don't end up with like a hot spot that ends up firing way too quickly. So there's a few different methods that people use. Some people use rollers, brushes, whatever. Personally, I was taught with a brush and that's how I've always done it. So what I do for these is I cut pieces that kind of go around the outside. So here, then I have flats that will end up going like this around. And then I have little pieces that I broke off that will be all the rest. So for a foothold, I do one coat of one and a half ounce chop strand mat. Chop strand mats really only meant for vinyl ester or polyester resin. The MEKP and the esters break down the binder, which you know in turn makes it easy to move it. So when it starts to wet out, um, it it's no longer glued together the way it is now. So. The way I end up doing this is I'll wet out the fiberglass before it goes on the foothold. If you remember, I already put the PVA on and it's dry. So I wet out the fiberglass and just set it on with a little bit hanging off so that way you have a cut edge. You gotta remember when all this is done, all this jagged edge at the bottom is gonna be hard and you know, you're gonna have to trim it, which is the last step. So what I do is I start laying it and I get most of it on and then I go back to getting the bubbles because as it sits, the resin will start eating the binder and it'll be easier to lay it flat.
And whenever you're doing this, you're just doing it with a small amount of overlap to the, to the last one. And when you get used to working with chop strand, you can kind of tell just by the color and how see-through it is, how many layers you have on it. One other little tip, you know, when you're starting to work with fiberglass, it's better to mix small pots of resin and keep, you know, making more than big pots. The larger the pot, a lot of times it'll start firing off a little quicker. So, you know, after a while of doing it, you know, you know, exactly how to mix and, you know, what's going to last, what's not going to last. But when you're starting out, it's better to do a bunch of small amounts rather than, you know, one really big one. Now I'm just going to go through, now that it's all, the fibers are relaxed, I'll go through and take all the little air bubbles out I can, and find whatever thin spots there are, and put a little more fiberglass there. Kind of work the bubbles downwards. They'll kind of end up working themselves out. And the last little piece over there, and we should be good. Now, what I like to do, and you guys can do with your own logo, I just take a printed piece of paper, wet it with resin, set it down, take all the bubbles out, 
and then just put a thin piece of fiberglass over it and then when you pull it out your logo will be fiberglass in the part. So I can take this little thin piece which is just the leftover pulling all the other stuff On to the next. So as you can see, it's just repeating the same process over. And as I said, I really should be wearing a mask on this, but the mask I have, I tried starting to film the video and you couldn't understand a word I was saying. So I'm kind of taking one for the team this time, but the stuff stinks and it's really not good for you to breathe. So when I do this, I have a shed basically that I have set up for all my composite stuff so I don't stink out the shop every time I do it. Let me find your same paper than that 220 that you gave me? Yes. Um, Give me an idea, I'll find it in any full part. What about you? The courting bench? You know the courting bench? Huh? The top right drawer. There should be some finer in there.
And there we go. Now, time to just let them dry. outside how they're all laid up come back in a little bit when they're kicked off and I'll show you how we separate them all right guys so here we go these are all hardened up as you can see so when they start to harden you know they'll move and warp a little bit so sometimes you'll see them start separating from the mold already so basically the trick is just kind of go around the mold Pop all the edges. If you pop the edges first, it makes it way easier to separate when you put the wedge in. Sorry, trying to do this with one hand. And then we'll pop the wedge in. There we go. Foothold. Voila. Pretty nice. Same thing over here. We'll come over here, pop this, as I said, get all the edges first. If you separate the edges from the mold first, it just makes it that much easier for it to pop because the edges are normally what ends up sticking. There we go. Sorry, it's hard to do this one handed, guys. Another one. Come over to this mold. Come around all the edges. Oh, I really can't hold the camera with my left hand. last one so that's how we do it so now all we'll do is we'll trim the mold edges and we'll have a set of footholds let me make one quick comment about this making fiberglass parts are truly awesome don't copy other people's parts if you want to make a set of footholds and you buy a set, modify them and make them your own. You know, make them a totally different shape, whatever. 
So use this stuff, learn how to make stuff your own. You know, if you have three skis, you want to make a set of footholds and save some money. That's cool too. But dude, make stuff yourself. This is such an awesome industry. We need more cool new parts out there. But, you know, to copy somebody else's part and try to sell it cheaper, to me, is a bummer. So, hopefully that's not too much of a rant. If it is, don't really know what to say. Copying fiberglass stuff has kind of been one of the things in the industry that's been terrible for some reason. Most of the other stuff, people copy it and everybody kind of gets, you know, told off about it. Don't really know because, you know, making molds and stuff like that, it's difficult designing everything, making it fit right. So just make it yourself. You know, if you want to fiberglass these in, you know, make this bigger. Oops, sorry about my finger. Make this bigger or whatever. Change it up. Make it your own. All for it. I know a bunch of people that have modified these over the years and made them their own. That's cool. You know, these were designed, I think, in 2002, something like that. So I get if you want to change them. To me, they work great. I love them. So enough of a rant. Hopefully, you know, that showed you what to do. So you can see the PVA as it's separated. So now all we'll do is clean all that crap off, give it a new coat, and lay it up again. All right, guys, like always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day.